Today I'm going to talk about preparing a pattern before we start making the lace. There are several ways of making the pattern. The traditional way would be to have the photocopy of the piece that you're going to make, a paper pattern, putting it on top of traditional uh, glazed card, pinning it down in all four corners. These would normally be drawing pins but I'm working from home and I can't find the drawing pins at the moment so just imagine these are drawing pins. And then we would, because this one has a, a nice even ground, we will put a ruler against it to prick the lines of ground. Now the pricker tool comes in many forms. It's basically a needle mounted into a holder. I don't know if you can see that on, the, on this. A little bit difficult to zoom in on it. It is a very short needle, you don't need the full length. Normally you would use a sharps needle, something like a, a size 10, but depending on what size thickness pins you may adjust that to finer or thicker. The needle wants to be just slightly thinner than the pins you intend using for the lace. Cut the needle in half with a pair of uh, snips and put the point end into the holder. This has got to be held in a vertical position to actually prick the, the holes. And the reason for this, if you go in at an angle, you'll get an oval hole, which won't hold the pins quite so uh, accurately. And then your lace will be a little bit on the sloppy side. So hold it vertically to prick each hole. Now, again, I was shown using beeswax and I will dab into the beeswax every three or four pins to prick the pattern. The second way of pricking a pattern that is one that a lot of lace makers have adopted more recent years, we just take the drawing pins out, you would apply a little bit of contact glue on the back, something like a prick stick, stick it down to your card, then cut a square of this matte sticky back plastic this comes in various colours. Blue is one that's been traditionally used. More recent addition is the grey. And we put this on top of the card and the paper pattern. Just peel off the backing. And you can see it's quite clear, but it does change the colour of your pattern to make it more visible. Cut the contact sticky back plastic just slightly bigger than your pattern and stick it down, making sure there's no bubbles in there. Then you still need to actually prick the pattern. Now this little motif is one that has been taken from my recent book, but I have enlarged it slightly so that you can actually see what I'm doing a little bit more clearly. I'm going to start on mine, I tend to do anything that's curved around the outside first keeping the needle vertical and hitting the centre of the spot, the dot that you've got on your pattern. Now despite using the sticky wet plastic, because it's on card you really do need to prick it. A fine pattern like this book's point piece, if you try and do it by placing the pins into an unpricked pattern while you're working, very often you will miss the pinholes and then again your lace won't be as accurate as it could be. Now pricking like this I would use the beeswax and it just helps to lubricate the needle make sure you're keeping it vertical. I'd go all the way around the outside on this pattern and then I would start on the motif and I would go all the way around the motif and the centre bit and the, all the filling there and then I would put a ruler against it, finding the nice line and prick against a ruler because this helps you if the pattern isn't 100% accurate which you find with older patterns and it helps you put the pinholes back in line by eye and straighten it up, true it up a little bit. And the final way of getting your patterns is one such as this which is a ready-to-work pattern available through my website, prepared from all of my designs, 
by a laser cutter. These are prepared using a digital file and they come ready to work with the holes ready made in them, producing a far more accurate pattern. But at the moment there's only my patterns that are available in this manner, so you still need to learn how to prepare your pattern before we start. A few more things to mention while we're talking about prickings. If you were pricking the pattern in the method I first described, where you put the photocopy on top of the card and prick through to form the pricking, after you've done all the pricking, you would actually need to then draw on all the markings. These should be drawn on in pencil first, and then in a very fine, something like a 0.1mm fibre pen, which is waterproof, drawn in over the top of the pencil. And then finally, when the pen has dried, rub off all the graphite, the pencil. Just to make sure none of it transfers to your threads, particularly if you're using a white or ecru thread. Before you actually do the separation of the card and the pattern, if you're using that method, you would take it off the pillow, holding the three layers together, or the two layers together, and hold it up at the light to see if you've actually got all of the holes. And the other way to do that is to turn it over and see if there are any gaps. The advantage of using the sticky back plastic, of course, is because you don't have to put these markings on. However, one thing just to note, if you're using a new pattern that you've never used before, have a good long look at it first to make sure there's no markings missing, pinholes missed, something that you might want to put on the photocopy before you put the sticky back plastic over the top. Once you've done that, you can't change anything. And the other thing I like to do, particularly on the Bedfordshire patterns, where you have areas of cloth stitch like this, and the wave in this swimathon pattern, I was always taught by Barbara Underwood to colour that in using a brush pen, again a waterproof one, so that you can actually pick out these areas of cloth stitch much easier. This pattern having now pricked it all, all the holes are in place, it's now ready to put on the lace pillow. <laughs>